Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to configure SQL Server Windows authentication in Linux uh, CentOS 7. In our previous videos, we installed SQL Server and we were able to connect to SQL Server internally as well as using SQL Server Management Studio uh, remotely. But uh, the authentication method that we used in previous video was uh, SQL Server authentication. So now we have to run some commands in order for us to be able to uh, connect to SQL Server using Windows authentication. That means that um, we can use our uh, domain Active Directory users to connect to SQL Server, just like we use uh, we usually use that um, um, method in our Windows uh, installation of SQL Server. So these are the steps we need to take in order for us to uh, successfully uh, configure the SQL Server Windows authentication. Number one, we'll create an Active Directory service account for SQL Server, just like we do it in Windows. And then we set up uh, SPN for that SQL Server uh, 80 service account. If we don't do that, then it's going to say that um, account is from unauthorized uh, um, server and we'll, we will not be able to connect to SQL Server. Number uh, three, we will validate the key version number of uh, the account that we have just created. Um, and then we'll create a Microsoft SQL Service key tab. This is important if your service account has the password, we need to create the key tab and then we will point all the uh, Kerberos authentication that's coming from remotely to connect to SQL Server using um, Active Directory users. They will actually uh, be pointed to the key tab and then SQL Server will authenticate us. Without key tab, we will not be able to set up the Windows authentication. So we have to set up proper permission. Once we create the key tab, we will give ownership to the service account of this key tab, and then we will set up uh, um, for other users um, the permission you know that's needed, read and write on on this uh, key tab. Number six, we will configure SQL Server instance to use a key tab file for Kerberos uh, authentication. That's a redirection. Uh, Any time an Active Directory user will try to connect to SQL Server, it would be uh, pointed to the key tab file and then from key tab file then we will be authenticated to connect to SQL Server. After we do that we need to restart the SQL Server and then we will test in our SQL Server Management Studio. So let's go in our server where we have uh, SQL Server um, installed in Linux uh, CentOS 7. Here are the technical um, these are the technical steps that we, we need to run these commands in order for us to uh, successfully uh, configure SQL Server Windows authentication. Let me minimize the SQL Server Management Studio. This We will need this when um, we are ready to test our Windows authentication. I'm going to close this and close this. Put side by side. Make this a little bit bigger. It's a little bit slow in my case. Just bear with me, please. All right. If you run the top command, um, I'm connected with the. Um, uh, TBS Linux node one, that's where we um, installed SQL Server um, and uh, it, it is running CentOS 7. So if we run top command, you will see that uh, the SQL Server services running under MS SQL user. Here's the user right here. And then this is SQL Server services. So our first step is creating a SQL Server service account. I have completed that already, but I'm going to show you real quick. This is my uh, Windows domain right here. One prerequisite of this video is that your uh, Linux server is already joined to the um, Windows um, domain controller. So if that's not done, then please go back to uh, my video how to uh, join uh, uh, CentOS Linux server to your existing Windows um, Active Directory domain. So once that's done, then these steps that in this video I'm going to show you will become valid. So I'm going to open up um, Active Directory users. If 
If you click on users and expand that, you'll see in my case that I have created MS SQL user. Let's go into the properties of this user. As you can see, the password never expires. So I have created that MS SQL at techbrothers.local. Um, so once you create this, you do need to remember the password for it because you need to, when we create the key tab, we need to put that password in there. So cancel this. If you don't know how to create a user, you can right click on this and click on um, new and click on user and follow the prompt. So this is how I created the first step. I'll minimize this. Our second step is, the first step we just completed, the second step is we need to set up service uh, principal name, SPN, for SQL Server Service Account. That is MS SQL that we just created. If this is mandatory, if we don't do that, we might run into authentication issue. So let's go ahead and run this command. Let me make this clear. So a set SPN dash A, uh, MS SQL service, uh, and then fully qualified name of your host name right here, uh, port 1433, and then this is the user, MS SQL. So keep in mind, this is Windows authentication user. So let's click, I'm sorry, this SPN needs to be set on um, your uh, Windows um, Active Directory domain. Not confused for a second. Right here. Open command pr prompt uh, in as an administrator and run this command. Click enter. It says duplicate SPN found. So this SPN is already existed, but for example, after um, creating all this, if we still find an issue with this, if I go and look at that, that what um, uh, what SPN is actually um, already configured um, with this user, I will run the command like this: set SPN dash L MS SQL, and I'll find that um, it is registered. However, it's registered with um, uh, TBS Linux node 2. So we will uh, remove that and then um, this is the command to remove it dash D instead of dash A. M S S P L. All right, updated object. I'm going to flush the DNS. DNS flushed successfully. Let's go ahead and run that command again with dash A, MS SQL, and see if it gives us error again. Still says found duplicate. I'm gonna, it might be during my practice, it might be created. So I'm going to delete that and try one more time. Okay, now it is registered. So this step is completed. <clears throat> As you can see right here, this is the command we ran on our um, Active Directory domain controller. Minimize this. Our next is um, checking the uh, key version number uh, for the act, um, AD account that we just created. So let's go ahead and run this command. Keep in mind that um, MS SQL at techbrothers.local, keep that uh, in capital. Uh, even when we run later on with the KD util, uh, you need to keep that at techbrothers.local capital, otherwise it m might not work. So password needs to be there.
this is this should be the exact password that you set up when you set up uh, Active Directory domain user. And then we'll go and take a look. KVNO. As you can see, that KVNO number is three. This is important to note. Usually, when you create a fresh new um, um, SPN and register it, the KVN number is two. But since there was one already and we removed it and we uh, um, registered, re registered it again, so now our KVN number is three. So next, when we create the key tab, we need to put that number right here. So let's go on, move on to the next step and I'll show you where we need to make change. So I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Next step is creating SQL key tab file. Uh, AD account with the password must set this up using KTUtil. Keep in mind that uh, when it asks you the password, um, you need to put the right password because KTUtil does not validate the password. If password is not right, then this is not gonna work. So let's go ahead and uh, run KTUtil. And up here, I was talking about the number. This is add int password, and then msq-p, msql, linux node one dot techbrothers.local. This portion right here needs to be capital, your uh, uh, domain name right here. In my case, it's techbrothers.local, so it needs to be capital. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let me change this to three, and this one as well. KDUtil has its own prompt, um, and KDUtil, when you type it here, it will prompt you to run the commands using KDUtil. It's not pasting right. It's a little bigger. All right, it's asking password, so provide the password. Again, it does not um, validate the password, so you need to make sure that the password is right. I'm going to copy this, run that as well. All right. Run command for the MS SQL key tab. And then we'll quit. This is to get out of the KDUtil um, command prompt. So now this set is completed, setting up our key tab file. Let's go ahead and set up our proper permission. That means that MS SQL account right here, we're gonna give it the ownership and then we're gonna set up a, a permission on our key tab. So let's go ahead and run this one by one. Our permissions are all set. Now let's um, let's go ahead and point um, our MS SQL config configured to go 
the C for for SQL Server to go against this key tab. So all the network Kerberos will go against this key tab. Now it says the server needs to be restarted, so we'll go ahead and restart SQL Server. Okay, services are restarted. Now let's go and test our Windows authentication. Here's my SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to refresh. Um, let's disconnect this. And I'll run as, let me see, let me close both. And I will run as um, SQL Server Management Studio as I'm a SQL account that we just created. Keep in mind that SQL Server Management Studio is 2012. I would recommend to use it 2017. And I'll show you the reason why I wanted to use it 2017, because we run into some issues here using lower version. MS SQL and put the password. All right, right here is Windows authentication. Let's connect. And it says login fail. Login is from untrusted. It cannot be used with Windows authentication. And this is not a right server. So this is our uh, TBS Linux node one. Connect. It says login failed for um, Tech Brothers MS SQL. So let's connect with SQL authentication first and create that uh, user. Give permission, give that user permission in SQL Server so we can connect with it. All right, we're connected with the SA account and let's give permission to MS SQL. All right. This is the user we created, so we're gonna give sysadmin to this user. Click OK, and now if we try to use Windows authentication, we should be able to. There you go. And let's go ahead and add other users. So one thing I wanted to show you that why uh, it is a good idea to use SQL Server 2017, uh, because in lower version of SQL Server Management Studio, uh, it really, the picker doesn't work. If you click on search, it will throw us error and it will not connect to our domain controller. That something has to do with the certificate and um, authentication as well, but if you use SQL Server uh, 2017, Management Studio 2017, then you click on search and the picker does work and it'll take you to your um, uh, Active Directory. You